Good morning, good morning. Long time no hear. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, God bless you, God keep you. May all your days be full of joy. Um, peace and happiness. Uh, I'm going to try to talk as I uh, go through the day getting dressed. Mama said a pig makes his bed, so I made my bed, so doing a little routine thing. Uh, uh, it was a beautiful day yesterday. Uh, I guess I want to preface uh, this with uh, uh, I had uh, anyone that had heard my one of my last messages, I believe it was my last, <laughs> I said my last message, you know, until something changed. And uh, I had uh, requested God, you know, my way, I, you know, God, show up, show out, you know. Uh, show me the vision. I show me the dream. If not, let me just go on with my life. You know what I'm saying? You know, or kill me, whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, God showed up and he showed out yesterday. I mean, just excellent. Just excellent. Uh, uh, I'm going to pause for a minute so I can, uh, hello, I'm back. Uh, well, uh, where was I at? Oh, I was telling you about uh, how I, I was asking God, my little, you know, my David moment. God, you know, uh, bless me. You know, bless me. You know, uh, now my, look, let this bitter cup pass from me. That's, that's why I was Jesus in, uh, in uh, Gethsemane, you know, just let me go. Let this pass. And all of a sudden, God showed up, and he showed out yesterday, and he showed out in this form. Uh, I had went to a Bible study Wednesday, and I listened to the message. It was powerful by Dr. Bruce Williams, and it was Kyle Killing Giants. So I was like, oh, wow, you know what I'm saying? That really needed this, you know, because I got a lot of big obstacles I feel in my life. So here it is. I was like, wow. So I got home. I was trying to listen to it because I do repeats. So I was trying to listen to it on the uh, live stream, you know, Based media, and uh, I started it in an uh, interruption. My son, somebody came back, so I held it at the bottom of the screen. Anybody know about computers? You know that when you're watching something, you, if you don't uh, continue viewing it, you can open another, leave that open, put it at the bottom of your screen, and open a new window. Okay, so it was at the bottom of my screen. So uh, I started it again in the evening, still didn't get to. Start, you know, I don't really like watching movies and stuff like that. I hate doing anything that's an hour. So I was like, okay, I'm scanning through, trying to find something to watch. So, you know, didn't find anything. So it's still at the bottom of the screen. So later on that night, oh, yeah, 11, 12 or something at night because my time is flipped. Uh, so I was uh, 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 laying in the bed and I uh, said, okay, let me find something to listen to because sometimes I listen to the Bible Psalms or whatever to go to sleep. So I'm listening to the pastor, the, the sermon again, Killing Giants, you know. And uh, in the process of listening, you know, all of a sudden, I, I got a habit. I was like, okay, what did he say about this? What did he say about that? So I was winding it back. In the process of winding it back, I never really watch the end. I don't watch the end of it. So I'm, in the process of winding it back, I noticed that, well, I nodded off. <laughs> Let me see, I nodded off at one point. So then I, when I was starting it again, I noticed I seen something about the Poor People's Coalition. So I'm like, what? So I was like, okay. So I, anyway, I started listening to it. I jumped up out of bed. You know, look, when God got a word for you, you get up and move on it. I don't care what time it is. So I started listening to it. Then I started, uh, 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 it's at the, at the bottom of it, past, uh, Pastor Wim said, you know, study it, basically study it. Read up on it first. So I, I listened. <laughs> So I read up on what the, what it was about. You know, it was a, a project that Dr. Martin Luther King, well, I'm not going to say project, something close to his heart, a mission that he has started to help poor people and to get people of all races and colors, basically, you know what I'm saying, white and blacks together, to uh, take and organize and, and to uh, help the poor, to help the, uh, to eliminate homelessness and uh, to, uh, uh, to fight injustice, 
you know, uh, basically too about uh, having people in homes and uh, getting them in houses and not being homeless, uh, making sure people are fed. Uh, the uh, so anyway, it was at five o'clock uh, yesterday. So uh, God helped me prepare and stuff like that. Got me some little clothes on. Thank God I found something to cover these tattoos. That's just being real with you. So I went in. I look presentable. <laughs> My daughter said, Mama, you like to get red robbed so bad, all that black. But I was like, hey, I was comfortable when I was dressed for the occasion. You know, everybody was casual, though. But, you know, hey. So I uh, got there. I read uh, uh, Portland Remor Memorial Church. I think I only been in there like one other time. I can't remember. But I think I only been in that church one other time. Yeah, I only been in that church one other time. That was, oh, God, over 20-something years ago. Probably 25 years, 30 years ago. Yeah, probably somewhere like that. And, um. Uh, yeah, it was 30 some years ago I had been in that church. So anyway, uh, we was in the church and everything. And uh, when I arrived, you know, it was a couple of white people standing on the step. I'm saying that to preference the story. Hello. And from now on, I'm really not going to preference things, you know. Anyway, so some youth was standing on the step. And so I was like, okay, am I going in the right door? So anyway, I went on in. When I got there, it was a lot of white people. And so I'm like, okay, this is for the poor, but there was a lot of white people. I'm going to voice my opinion. So I'm like, wow, <laughs> they're talking about poor people. They're talking about uh, not so much the violence. They didn't focus really on the violence. They really was talking about the issues that really is causing the violence because they're poor. People are poor. People don't have things, and they're angry. And rather than act out in society, they're acting out on each other. So, okay, I'm looking for Park Hill. I'm looking for New Bird. I'm looking for... Highlands. I'm looking for St. Mary. I'm looking for everybody. The poor zip code, the rich. I'm looking for everybody to be there, and it surprised me. I almost cussed. Surprised the what you know out of me. What? And so I'm like, okay, don't leave, Janice. Sit down. So you know, gotta make you sit down. So I sit down. I'm listening and everything, and all of a sudden I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like a uh, brother Tim Ma say, a uh, uh, aha moment, and it was an aha moment because it was like, wow. Okay, I, I can identify with that. You know, I can identify with that. Oh, yeah, I know about that. Oh, yeah, I know about that. Okay, I've been fighting that. Okay, I've been fighting that. Okay, yeah, I've I, I been there. And um, I'm saying that to say this. I wish everybody would have been there. Rich, poor, whatever. I wish they would have been there. But anyway, let me stay on point. Uh, There was a lady that just hit me. It just hit me, you know, uh, a couple of pastors spoke, uh, Pastor Williams was there, of course, which surprised me, you know, Pastor Williams was there, and uh, a couple of people I've seen from, I uh, guess, that are 10 base, they spoke to him, but the the important thing was the man, Mr. Barber, I think is his name, he spoke, that was wonderful, but the things that really hit me. You know, I mean, he talked statistics. I don't like statistics, but he hit some powerful statistics. You know, uh, he was talking about that. Uh, uh, we look at it. He broke it down. You know, I'm not into that dope, total, total statistic. But basically what he was saying is more poor people white than it is black. If you adding up doing the numbers in a different way. And I was like, wow, that's powerful. Which it didn't pull us poor. <laughs> but he was talking about the poor people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, talking about health care. You know, how, how God wants us to have, everybody to have health care, you know. And uh, he addressed some powerful issues. But the one that struck me, like I said, I can identify with that one. But the one that really struck me was the one when the lady that used to be in the military. Uh, I think a project was called a Moore or something. A Moore or something. I don't know. I forget. I didn't get with her. But anyway, uh, she was standing there and she was talking about how she basically, she been in the army. She served this country and all that. But she found a lump in her chest and she didn't have any medical insurance. So she had to sit around and the lump got bigger and bigger until the uh the lump became cancer, which was then went on to the back into her back. And then, 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 once it turned into cancer, they gave her insurance. Been or done that. I don't have I didn't have cancer or whatever, but once you know, I've been there. Once something is real bad, before that you can't get no help. But once it gets bad, you get it. But at the same time, let me let me preface my situation with it happened with me, and I didn't have no insurance, and I needed surgery. But God, but God, God came through and blessed me with a surgery from U of L Hospital. Yeah, like I said, I shout out to them, and they took me in, didn't have no medical insurance, and operated on me. You know, and it blessed me. I didn't have to pay nothing. 
considered poor. Hello, you know. So thank you, Jesus. You know, God initiated that. You know, He didn't. It didn't have to to wait. You know, it. it you know, thank God. And um, so anyway, that issue that was powerful. I like that. I like that. So, like I said, I wish more. I wish we were all there. Everyone was there, all colors and races. But anyway, um, after the meeting. After the little gathering and stuff like that, they had everybody sign a card. I had already been online because the past had already said, look into it. So I went on and I had signed up online for the program, the Homeless, it's, a, the, uh, it's the Poor People's Coalition. And um, so they took the cards and all this and that. And so I'm asking people, you know, which is, when I do things, it's just be amazing me because Janice is speaking, hello, whatever. So I was like, well, who's in charge? So, you know, well, him, and then I'm talking to him. It's one man they pointed to. So I'm talking to him, and he's like, well, he said, ah, well, you know, I'm sorry, yeah, we had already had the training. Because I'm like, what is the training? <laughs> Didn't nobody talk details about the training. Because I'm like, I wanted the training. I want to know what the training was. So I don't know what the training was. So I'm asking him. So it was private. You know, it was they had the training. I missed it. And then the second session is going to be private, which is today. You know, so I don't know what, I don't know what that's about. You know, a little bit. I can't count. I don't know. Hello. So anyway, so I'm talking to him and he mentioned this and this is powerful. This is the aha moment too. He said, uh, I got the information late and he said when I got it late, I passed it on to Reverend Williams late. You know, even though it was late, it was on time. Did y'all catch that right there? It was late, but it was on time because God had me go through and then I got it. And so anyway, he said, well, you've got to speak to one of these people. So the one lady that had, uh, one of the people that was his associate, I didn't see her anymore because I was standing behind him. So I didn't see, I only seen the back of her head. So I think she had left. So, uh, and uh, Mr. Barber had left, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't feeling well, so he left. So then, turn around, here it is. They introduced me to this lady. This is her car. Uh, they call the repairs. So... I talked to her, and she said, call her, email her, or whatever. So I emailed her last night. God said, when you know, when you strike, strike now. So I called her. So I'm waiting for her to give me some information about what they're going to do. You know, they talk about organizing and this or that. But I want to know who are the organizers here. They said they want to have organizers in each state. Okay, so who's representing Kentucky? Who, where, where's the organization at? You know, and so that's where I'm at. I want to know what's the organization because... I want, I want to, you know, yeah, we need to get together, you know, and I don't like talking about it, be about it. And so, like I said, those are some things, you know, I mean, I like that. I like that because I had already spoke with a person and I want to address some issues with, with this person, but I don't think they want to come out in the open. You know, I don't think they want to be seen. They're kind of anonymous. And I know that's how a lot of people are nowadays. You know, they want to sit, they got a, they have opinion, but they're afraid to vocalize them. And I understand that, you know. And this gentleman happens to be a white man. And me and him, we was talking. I'm talking about heart to heart. We was on the same page. It blew my mind. We was on the same page. We talking about racism and all of it. And it was powerful. And so I would love to have a, a, a table where we could sit down and we could communicate with each other like this. And, you know, in the open. If we can't, then I want to I wanna figure out some type of way that we could sit down and we could, we could commu I, I want everybody. You know, I didn't want to take those cards because that's that thing. I don't, this is my thing too. And I, I need to address, I don't want to take from people's church and come come from this church and take members and all of this from people because that's not what God wants me to do. I don't want to do that. That's stepping on, you know, that's hurting people. I don't want to do that. I, I'm going around steal people's members, come in here. Nah, yeah, I, I say what I say. That's why I use this YouTube thing as a form. You know, if you want to talk to me or whatever now, I know at first I was un you know, untalkable, you know, unapproachable, and I'm sorry for that. But at the same time, that was my mama, and I was I was protecting my mama. I hope you would have been doing the same. So, like I said, if you want to approach me and you want to sit down, we can talk about some things, I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? But things need to be done now. I mean, they was talking about something about I heard a June, then I heard or something. I I'm like, oh, no, nah, we need to start doing something now. If we gonna, that, that, that to me, I love what they did. I love what they're saying. I, you know, it's, it's a lot of things powerful what they're, they're talking about. You know, I seen some of the little, uh, you know, uh, I got to get, get my vocabulary better with politics. But po a couple of politicians was there I had seen before, you know. And uh, 
like I said, uh, I need to get strong on that, study that a little more. But at, regardless, we need to take, we need to do things now. When we talk about it, be about it. Don't, oh, well, later on. I think that's, to me, that's where we're losing people. That's where we're losing uh, poor kill and, uh, uh, I was going to say South Wakata home. That's where we're losing the uh, Portland and West End and St. Matthew. That's where we're losing people is that we'll come out here. We strong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do this. Yeah, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, you know, we singing a fight song. But then after a while, it's like, okay, I'm ready. We riled up. Oh, yeah, come on, bring it. And then the next thing you know, it's like, okay, well, hold that thought. And then I'm going to get back with you next month. Okay, I don't forget about it. Now, 10 more people are dead. Somebody's starving. Okay, so now, let's not do that. Let's start. When we talk about it, let's be about it. Let's put the action. Let's put some action behind those words immediately. You know, and so that's what I want to do. Right now, I got to make sure I'm taking care of this right here, these bills, and I got to do what I got to do on that head. But like I said, that's what I, that's where I'm at. And so, like I said, I, I, I don't want to approach. I learned a long time ago. I forget how I learned it, but how it came to me, but... You don't approach a person until you have that, until you know what you're going to do. You know, it don't go to a person talking about, hey, let's, let's, uh, let's have a party. And then the person asks you, well, okay, what kind of party do you want? Well, I don't know what kind of party I want. I want to have a party. Well, you don't know what type of party, but when you know, call me. Now, when you address a person and you're talking about doing something, talking about making change, you need to address that person. When I go to this man, I want to go to this man with, this is what I want to do, A, B, C, D. This date, this time, be there, I'll be square, <laughs> you know. And so that much I do know, and that's what I'm going to do. Like I said, trying to do that and trying to work and things like that and not being educated. I admit that. I'm not educated totally on a whole lot of politics, but I might not know everything about politics. I might not know all of the politicians that are in offices everywhere. I might not know which category that everybody fits in. But this is what I do know. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to work paycheck to paycheck. I know what it's like to work and still be broke. I know what it's like to work every day and still turn around and have to borrow for somebody. I know because I just experienced that. So I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be on Section 8. I know what it's like to be on public assistance. I know what it's like to be on welfare. I know what it's like to take that $200 and you got three kids and you got to stretch it every month. Even though they're giving you more food stamps than they do check. I know about that. I know about that. I know about that. That that I know about. I know what it's like to go get you a used car because you cannot afford a real one. I know what it's like to drive your car and you don't have insurance and you get your valuable lives, the valuable lives of your kids and sometimes your mother and whoever else will get in the car with you. <laughs> yeah, I know what it's like. We call that riding dirty in the street. I know what it's like to ride dirty because I rode dirty for some years until I got caught. And I had to keep insurance for two years. I else I was going to jail. So, yes. Yes. I can identify with that. Oh, yeah. I know about that. I know about being poor. You know. I thank God I've never been hungry except by choice. But I've never been hungry. You know. And uh, when our lights got cut off before, you know, mama got them cut back on. So, we kept mama kept that on. Lights, gas, food, and things like that. But I know what it was like when they was out. I know what it's like to be cold. You know, believe me, I know that every year, especially in here. That's why I don't be playing with LG&E. I don't be turning on no heat. Talking about you going to give half my money. I know what it's like to turn on the LG&E trying to be warm, trying to walk through the house with some shorts on when it's, uh, uh, what, 20 below zero and all this type of thing. You know, uh, 30, 40 degrees out outside. And you run around, want to be in the house with some shorts on. You turning the heat up on 85 and 90. And then when the month roll around, the LG&E bill come in and your LG&E bill is four or $500. And you trying to figure out how you going to pay it knowing that your income is only 200 a month. Hello. I know. I also know how to talk to these people out here, LG and E and people that do really care. They give you plastic. People that give you plastic. Lie heat, been on lie heat. People go out here that'll help you maintain your house. Put some plastic up. Seal up some of them windows to hold that heat in when you do. Turn your thermostat down to 70, 65, or whatever it is. To be honest, I don't really turn mine on often. I try to use heels. So, you know, I mean... I'm not trying to get nobody in no four or five hundred dollars, especially I don't have. Warmness is not that serious, you know. You get money in your pocket if you turn your heat down. So 
So resources like that, I want to go out here and I'm, I'm going to give you that, you know, which I just gave it to you. I'm not going to wait from now. I'm going to give it to you. Uh, one of the issues that just came to me now, and like I said, I've been doing this, what they came to me about, social justice. I didn't know the name of it. I heard the pastor Williams talk about it before, but I didn't know this. that's what I was about. But I've been doing it. You know, helping people when they needed aid, with how to sign up for this and what direction to go in, who, who can help them and who can not help them. So uh, here's an issue on the table now. Uh, uh, my daughter's friend, she lost her Section 8. She was waiting with the landlord, which I tried to tell her. I tried to tell her. I tried to tell her. I didn't try to tell her, I tell her, because I'll be honest with you. I, I used to do it. I'm going to throw a little hint. Real, I found out, and that's what I'm saying now. We can't throw hints to people. Right, no matter what color they are. People that need help, we need to address it. People out here that's dying, kids that's seeing murder, and, and seeing all of these little emblems, or these little teddy bears and stuff where somebody have died, that's affecting these kids. I'm not saying you definitely need to take it away, but I'm like... It, Let's bring some issues to the table to to and, and stop the violence. Let, let's talk to some people. Let's put some positive things on the table. Let me back up real quick before I talk about this chick that lost a Section 8. What I loved about that meeting, because at first when I got there, I was like, all these little kids running around. I'm like, wow, what they doing? You know, it's a serious. And then as I, as I stood there longer, you know, because I go into my meditation mode. <laughs> you know, I know people are like, what's she doing? I go into my meditation mode. That's when I'm I'm thinking. And I was like, yeah, you know, because the lady was talking, you know, and then I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, this man's chasing his little kids. He's talking to them. He's threatening them and everything. They're running around everywhere. And I said, I appreciate that. That's a blessing because these kids can sit back and say, I seen my daddy and my mama. They was at a meeting against racism. They was at a meeting to help the poor. That's something they can reflect back on. I didn't see no big media names there. I don't know. Mr. Barbara, I think it's his name. He was talking about that, which meters here. So I don't know. I don't know if Channel 4132, whoever was there. But I mean, that was a time to be there for man. And now, let me go back to the issue. The little young lady, like I said, I was telling her, I said, look, stop going with that man, going out with that man. He's eating. Then he's talking about he's supposed to fix up the house and all that. I said, stop doing. I mean, if I was you, I wouldn't do it. You know how we do it. If I was you, <laughs> if I was you, you know, I'm trying to be out there. And, you know, because I'm looking like, where's my mom at? You know, which, you know. So anyway, so he kept half doing the house, half doing. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. So turn around. The people came to inspect her place. Anybody know about Section 8? No way. When they're inspecting, you, you don't have to be there. But that door, that landlord has to be there. Somebody has to be there to open that door so they can get in there and inspect. The man didn't get there. So then he's running around with her. He had promised her on the sideline that if she didn't get if, if the place fell, that he was going to rent it to her. But once it fell, all of a sudden, all that changed. So, you know, and I want to tell, tell her some things that she needs to do. You know, she needs, you know, I, I, I pray about things before I offer suggestions because you can offer suggestions to a fool. <laughs> I'm going to be blunt with you. You can offer suggestions to a fool and you think they're going to take it and they're telling you they're going to take it and they misconstrue everything that you told them to say and then they want to blame you for the outcome. So like I said, I prayed about it and then I'm going to look up some things that she could do. Number one, like I told her last night, it should be somewhere in the breach of contract because he promised her those things. Some other things she needs to look at about that and that goes for anybody out there. Don't set up with somebody. If somebody's trying to do something for you, they trying to rent you a house or something like that. You don't have to sleep with them, hopefully. <laughs> Please don't. Sleep with them. Don't let them do all that chummy, chummy stuff to get the place. That's official. You doing business. Legally, that's what they supposed to do. If you're going to rent me the place or you're not, I shouldn't have to smile with you. I shouldn't have to sleep with you. I shouldn't have to go out to dinner with you to get my paper signed. If, if you're going to sign it, you're going to sign it. Section 8 tells you that. That's that's why they have meetings for you. No matter how long you've been on, that's why you go to a briefing. And they tell you all these things. They explain everything you need to know from A, B, C to D. I give housing authority that credit. They will tell you. And if you do not understand, they tell you that. If you slow, whatever. You got mental problems. You don't understand, whatever. They'll tell you. If we can't address, we'll get somebody here to address that. We'll help you. They will help you. They tell you that. You don't do those things. So... Like I said, I'm going to try to do something today for her because she's sitting calm and here again. This is what I'm talking about, peace. 
This is what I'm talking about exactly. I want to head off violence. I don't want her to take and end up saying something to the man or doing something out of hand, going to jail. So that's why I said, I prayed about it first. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find some things that, see, that she could do and then she could give some, you know, put some action behind it. But yeah, these, these things like this is what make you want to act out. You know, you know, lost her section eight and she got a newborn baby. I ain't putting all that, I ain't put her business out there. Her daughter just had a baby, you know. And then, like I said, this is what irks me. Evil. Evil. You were smiling in the face and all of that at first. I haven't seen the man, but he's smiling all up in your face and making promises that then he didn't keep them. And now this child don't even have a place to stay. Well, thank God she got a place, but she's almost, she might lose that place. So then she's homeless. And then people sit back and wonder, well, how would they get homeless? They was on drugs. The girl wasn't on no drugs. Oh, shit, they on drugs. They doing this. I didn't cuss. Oh, shoot, I hope I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, they on drugs. They doing crack. Everybody's not doing drugs or crack. Some people don't know what they don't know. Some people get the okie doke. I been, I got okie doke. When they stole my car, now they telling me I got to pay insurance on it. I'm getting ready to go fight this. I want to address that. You know, I got the police report and everything. I'm trying to deal with that. But she going to tell me I still owe her $12 for a car I don't even have. And this Dean bet still running around the streets, probably trying to okie doke somebody else, huh, and this fake uh, record driver. So, yeah, that's, that's stirring up some emotions in me, making me feel like they say. <laughs> I was talking to the chicken. They, the young vernacular, it just it just broke, breaks my big word. It just blows me away. She said, I don't know. I'm just feeling some kind of way. And I'm thinking like, feeling some kind of way, honey, you angry, you hurt. You know, you pissed off. Put a voice on it. Yeah. You know, so like I said, I'm going to do the best I can to help her. You know, I'm going to see what I can do to help her with that. But some things is final, final. You know, I mean, like I said, I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I, I, that's what gets me. I just don't understand. Her is a person. Her I am. And I'm offering you advice and I'm offering you my experience. <laughs> I got experience. <laughs> experience. I'm offering you my experience, honey. And I, I don't understand why she didn't take it. And and that right there, that's a boy. That that's that's if I could figure that out, if I could figure out why I offer that, what is it something about me? Is it the way I carry myself? Is it the goals of my mouth? Because that that's something I deal with daily. Is I'm not a stupid person. I'm not dumb by no means. But when I'm addressing, when I walk up to a person to approach them as I did yesterday, immediately, especially if I'm smiling, uh, and they see my teeth, as soon as they see the goals, it's like, okay, <laughs> what she talking about, you know. But once I open my mouth and I start talking, then it's like, okay, wait a minute. You know, and the same thing happened with this lady with the repair. At first, when I approached her, it was like, okay, she can't leave. And then when I started talking, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, you know. And and, and I, uh, I'm i going to hold her to that. Like I said, if I don't hear from her today, probably about five, then I'm going to go on with my own agenda, you know. But uh, like I said, mm -mm. I'm going to try to help this girl. But like I said, I wish I could find out that boy. What is it, something? Is it my nails? Is it, what is it? Is it my color? Is it that I'm black? She's black. You know, is it that? What? What is it that, that didn't allow you to hear me when I was saying, stop flirting and dealing with this man like that? You know, don't do that. Don't go out with him. He's taking it more than what you think. He's seeing more into it than you, what you're thinking. You know, what part didn't she understand? I told her also, I said, let that place go. I said, you down to the dead land and I read Flunk once. Don't do it again. Find you something else. I yells then. Yeah, true, you had a short time, but you still had an opportunity. We, we, now I got to go to God. Now I got to go to God. I'm sorry. I used to knock on the door, keep on knocking. Knocking on the door means I kept on going in, sticking my foot in places and putting my head and body in places I shouldn't have been. And I never, I, I didn't give God a chance to say, hey, wait a minute, Janice. I got somewhere else for you to go. I got something else for you to do. You know, and what I love about God, the God that I serve, is there's no deadlines. Except in this situation, because you know, I y'all listen to my last one. I'm like, God, look, show up, show out. You ain't going to do nothing. Because, hey, I was thinking about, hey, I'm going to go to the club. I want to go to the club. I'm going to hang out. Let them do some drinking. I want to have some fun. You know, I, I'm not going to sit back and tell you my life is all a bowl of jelly. You know, but like I said, I see 
It's not so much I see other people having fun. I want to have fun. I want. I like going out. To, I like listening to jazz. I want to do those things. You know what I'm saying? And I realize too that my dating and stuff like it has nothing to do with what I'm doing now. It's, it's, that's something else. I'm picky. I meet men. <laughs> if that's one. But I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm a little picky. You know what I'm saying? You know. So I, I don't want all of that little loose date and stuff. I'm not with that no more. I'm a grown lady. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, I was like, God, come on. And then, like I said, God opened the door and he revealed to me, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you've been doing. Here it is in front of you. Go ahead. And so I thank God for that. And I have many moments, like I said, with God like that. But I'm glad he did show up, you know, because I was getting ready to show out. So I'm glad, you know what I'm saying? I might not last long, but I was going to show out. And so I thank God for him showing up, you know, and I, I really was just riled up. I loved it. I loved it. You know, it, I, I love people addressing. And like I said, I, I, that, that's my purpose. Our Reverend Derek Miles was there, the one that put me on my path. That blew my mind. I didn't get to speak to him. I don't think he seen me, but that was powerful, you know, because when I was first was trying to find my direction, he said, well, what you're trying to do is you want to help poor people and thus begin the name. See how God turns things around? All these years, God brought that all the way back. And that was 2007. What was that? That was 2000. When did I get the name? Vigilantes for Jesus. Vigilantes for Jesus, I think, oh, yeah, not 2007 for them. I think I go back. I might go back further than that. I got to look. But, yeah, he said he put me on a peg because I said I like helping poor people, but I want to do things for them. And he sat down. We had a meeting. He had his deacon with him. We sat there and we talked. And I told him, and he, di he directed me, this is what you want to do, and you got to get this, and you get your, your number and all that. He, he gave me order. He gave me order and direction. I love that. So, yeah, it was beautiful to turn back the hands of time and then see your beginnings. It was beautiful. I'm drinking water right now, but I need to drink more water. We all need to drink more water. But like I said, it was a beautiful meeting, and I wish more people would have showed out and uh, to listen because it's about us. It's about us, you know. And uh, God's telling me it's time to stop talking. And so, like I said, God bless you and God keep you. Have a beautiful, wonderful day. And I know it shocked some people. I know what anybody seen it. My hair was red, and I put a texturizer in it because it was curling up too, you know, boyish. Like, I was like, hold up, wait a minute, it's getting too tight. So my hair was curling up because I have a frohawk, and it was uh, pretty red. And so when I put the texturizer in, it turned my hair orange, which is the real color that I wanted my hair to be. So, hello. <laughs> so, it's not that I'm trying to always change. It's just happening. But well, I do want to change. I'm sorry. I'm not even going to apologize for that. Yes, I do want to change. But that change was a surprise. Uh, I had a dream last night and it keeps rolling in my head. Something about an abandoned house. I had a dream about an abandoned house and then some people. Some people were standing around and somebody, somebody came to talk to me. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's hanging in my head. Like I said, this is, this is early and this is what my brain is. I, I, I try to make uh, videos when all this stuff is playing out in my head so I can put it down uh, on the uh on the video, so like I said, you guys, shut up. Like I said, I'm waiting for this lady to call me, Alicia. Now her name is Laura. Laura uh, Addison or something. I'm waiting to see if she emails me and stuff. If she doesn't, like I said, uh, I try to brush up on information, politics and stuff. As far as politicians, that what I what I'm thinking that they're well, God says shut up. So anyway, uh, God bless you, and you have a wonderful, marvelous day. Bye bye.